Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that lap. Let's see if you did this. We have a list, one, two, three, and it is embedded in a tuple. Also one, list, three. If I print that tuple, I see there it is, a list inside the tuple. I'm not saying this is a good programming practice. I'm just wanting you to understand thoroughly what goes on here. If I say L of one equals zero, that two becomes a zero. It's a list. I can do that. I can do item assignment. If I print my tuple, then I see that the embedded list, in fact, has a zero in there. Now, did I mutate my tuple? No, I did not. The tuple still has as its second element or one element, the list, the square brackets, the facility that is a list. Within that list, we can change it all we want. If I try to change in my tuple, T1 equals zero, make that whole item zero, I'll get that error. Okay, here we have a list of friends. I want to make a list of enemies, but instead of having Bob in my enemies, I'm gonna put in Brian, leave Bob alone. So here are my friends. I am making an independent list. Shallow, yes, but we will see that's an independent list. I could have said friends.copy and it would have been with friends and it would have been the same. Now my enemies, the oneth element, I'm making Brian. So here I have my friends and we see that Brian did not replace Bob. So that's what I wanted, that's good. If you did friends equals that list and enemies equals that list, and then I said enemies of one equals Brian, they are not independent. There is only one list with two identifiers. So when I use one of the identifiers to change the list, the other identifier sees the same change. This characteristic of a list is a good thing. You have to get used to it, but a list, when you make a change on a mutable object, all the identifiers that see that mutable object, even when they're in other modules or other functions, no matter what, they're gonna see the change. So mutable objects are real good for communication. You don't have to pass them back. We're gonna make that more explicit. Here's the third exercise and it is a program to write. Now I'm making a function called mix colors and it'll take in any number of colors. The, this constant of tuples are the three primary colors. Now then, I need to collect two colors, so I'll call that both colors. So far, I've got zero. I'm going through my colors with that idiom for doing that with the for loop, very nice. If the color is in primary colors, then I append it to my both colors. And I add one to my number of colors, so that if my number of colors gets to two, I have two. If I go through all my colors and I've never hit break, then I'm returning gray because that was what you do when the input didn't give you two primary colors. So now I have a list of both colors, which is two of these three. This is a bit algorithm intensive, isn't it? If the first one and the second one, if both colors are the same, then I return the zero with one or either one because if you mix red and red, you get red. Now, if red is in both colors, then I know the other one must either be yellow or blue. If it is yellow, then I'm returning orange. If it is blue, then I'm returning purple. 
If yellow is in both colors, then the other one is not red, it is blue. I didn't even have to say if. I return green. And there's no way for that to make an error because we checked that before with the gray. I could have just returned green. Improve that, would you please? Well, I did a good test. I did a totally exhaustive, exhaustive test. Here are the colors I tested with. And for one in colors and other in colors. So I am doing all combinations. I'm holding on red while I go through other being red, yellow, blue, and aqua, etc. Now is going to be the tuple of one and the other. And I'm printing that out and I'm printing what happens when I mix colors of asterisk now. So that tuple will be splayed out into our two arguments and then I'm put back together into a tuple. Very flexible. So that gives me my answers. Here I added random. So I added some green and gold and I just did a few random ones. Doing random things for testing is not good for testing again later because I have to look and see what was mixed together and whether or not it's correct. So now my colors, I shuffle them up And I'm doing three times with shuffling them and putting them all in. My goodness. And so I can look at this output. These are determined. They're easy to run another test on in three years. Make sure nothing has changed. These you have to think about every time. Red and blue are the first purple, etc. Okay, we're getting someplace. I'll see you when you're ready to move on.